Hey guys, I hope you are all doing really well. So today I wanted to make some face masks with you. As of yet, we have not been told in England to wear masks out and about. And I made a few masks the other day, but they have elastic that goes behind your ears. And my ears are very sensitive and hate having things put behind them. Um, so I thought I would make some with ties today and hopefully you guys can follow this along and make one of your own if you want to. Um, I'm possibly thinking about making a few more and just selling a few. In case you guys want one and you're really struggling to get hold of a mask, um, these are not surgical masks so they won't prevent you from catching COVID. But if you can't get hold of a surgical mask then this is kind of at least something. And because the virus has a two week incubation period you may not know that you have it and you might still be going out and obviously breathing on everyone and all that stuff. Um, so a mask is probably quite a good idea at the moment. So I'm going to show you how to make some really cute ones. <laughs> so the fabric they recommend is cotton with a high thread count so anything that is quite tightly woven. I think tea towel fabric was also on the list um, but I will also try and find a few websites I can link below that are all about masks and all the different types because there's a lot of different surgical masks um, and obviously these are not surgical masks just keep that in mind. <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna look through my fabrics now and see which ones I want to use and then start making. <laughs> pulled out a selection of fabrics that I think would work well for masks I particularly like the black gingham <laughs> so I think I'm going to use that first to show you guys how I make them and then I might make some more in these fabrics okay so I've got my fabric and then this is the pattern I've been using to make these face masks in. So you don't have to use a pattern, you can just measure it out on the fabric and cut it out, but I just think it's a lot easier. So for each mask you only need to cut out one. So that's that and we can come on to that later. But next I'm going to make the straps. So I think I worked out I wanted the straps to be about 23 inches. So you'll need four straps. I'm going to measure up 23 inches and then I'll just rip along there a little bit. Then next you can just rip it to get the seams but I think I'm going to use my circular cutter just to be a bit more accurate. <laughs> and I'm going to take four centimetre strips. So this is all the fabric you need. So I'm going to start with the straps and I'm going to make those by folding them in half and I'm just going to stitch down here leaving about a centimetre in. So to make your life a bit easier it's better to just iron them in half first. So now I'm just going to go and sew down all of these and then we can turn them through. Now that you've sewn the strip you then want to trim pretty close to the stitch line but not too close. Also if you don't want to do this step you could just use some bias binding or just any straps that you guys have in your house, maybe some string or something. Then you want to turn your strap through. So. <laughs> All you have to do is take your strap and then say about a centimetre down, cut a little slit into it. And then using a hairpin, you just slot it into the top of the slit, like that. And then you just push it down the whole pin inside. And this bit's a bit fiddly to get started because um, you just want to basically turn it inside out on itself. Once it gets to the end, it is just 
so satisfying to pull out the strap. Ta-da! And then you have a strap and you can go and iron it flat and it looks so nice. So the next stage is to take your rectangle and you just want to fold it good sides together and then on the open seam you want to stitch it closed but you want to leave a little tiny gap maybe about that big open so that you can turn it all through. Okay so I've just sewn down there and I've left a little gap here and then you want to open it out and press it flat with this seam in the middle and then you want to open up the seam here and just press it down. Okay, then you will need your straps because this is where you're going to attach them. So you're basically going to attach one in each corner, um, but obviously on the inside. So I'm just going to place them in the corner and I might pin them down. And then you just want to make sure these are tucked inside so you don't sew them down at all. And then you want to do the same with the other side. So then you just need to stitch down here and down here and then we can turn it all inside out. Now that I've sewn down the sides, I can then find the little hole that we left earlier and basically pull everything through That's what it looks like all pulled through and then the little hole is just at the back and that can be ironed down flat and you don't need to worry about stitching that up really. So you just want to iron this flat in the front and then an easy way to get the pleats is just to fold the mask in half give it a good press and then fold it in half again and press and then when you open it back out you should have creases that form where you need to put the pleats. It's also partly guesswork but I feel like once you know what it looks like it's quite easy to see where they should go. And then using pins again, just pin those into place. But then the last bit of sewing to do is just to stitch down here and hold the pleats into place. So there we go, that is one mask finished. Put it on and show you guys what it looks like. But the pleats basically mean it can go over your nose and under your chin. So that is that. <laughs> so there we go, that is the finished mask and then I've just tied it around at the back. I don't think it looks awful. I'm going to take it off, talk to you guys again. So just a little tip when you're tying a mask with straps, um, this is also really helpful for trainers in any shoes, um, is instead of doing just one turn over, do another turn and then by the time you pull it, it won't slip and move and then you can tie your bow. Um, so yeah, it's just a handy little tip. So there we go, that is how I make my little face masks with ties. Um, you can obviously use elastic if you want. It's a lot quicker to just use elastic or just some other ties that you don't make yourself, but I just think it's very satisfying to make these. <laughs> Give it a go yourself if you want. Um, I may be selling some, I don't know if I get around to making some more, um, so stay tuned to my Instagram if you are interested. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you all next week. Bye! Bye.